assembled all 12 of the fighters. We're going to be stepping into the ring for what's, without doubt, the biggest boxing event in Aotearoa, New Zealand in 2023. Thank you for coming. I think we've uh, assembled, thanks to the assistance of a combination of Isaac Peach and Monty Beetham, the strongest Fight for Life card we've ever had. I know for a fact that the guys we've got and girls that we have up on the stage, uh, they will really go hard out and you'll see a very, very physical contest in every single fight. We've got something unique happening. Of course, we've got the two women heading up um, our card for the IBO Super Bantamweight title. We're very, very excited about that. We think that Miyamoto is going to become the next superstar of New Zealand sport from a female point of view, and male for that matter, because she can really fight, and I think you've seen quite a bit of Mia's backstory. Very, very privileged to have uh, Tanya Walters down here all the way from Canada. One of the people that they all left out was uh, Edison Soltran, who's down here to fight uh, the IBF number five middleweight in the world, our very own Andre the Russian Mikhailovich. That's going to be an exciting fight. Andre's only, if he can beat Edison, he's only got one more fight to go to the world title, which is exciting. Of course, we've got a world title up here with the main fight. And then we've got Jerome Pampalone, who's the IBF light heavyweight uh, number eight in the world. He's only two or three fights away from a world title as well. So we, we, we come back here to New Zealand to put boxing back on the map. We've got three amazing professional fights and we've got what I consider to be some of the best celebrity fights we've ever had. Justin Hodges, all-time Queensland legend, absolute larrikin. Um, he's up against Liam Messam, who at some stage wants to be the New Zealand heavyweight champion, so that will be one hell of a fight. We've got the very nuggety, tough uh, Sam Tui Tupo, who's come all the way back from Manchester. His brother's coming back from France to watch the fight. Sammy says, Dino, I normally have quite a few people turn up to watch me. I says, yes, sweet, Sammy, how many tickets you need? I need 170, Dino. <laughs> so uh, it's fair to say that uh, very, very impressive with the amount, and he's actually delivered on it. A lot of people say, oh, you know, we'll have 20 or 30 people come, and they never do, but for Sammy, mate, he's got one hell of a family. He's, uh, he's up against Roy Asatazi, and Roy's uh, one of the all-time great New Zealand rugby league players. Sammy's one of the all-time great rugby union hitters, and so I expect these two to absolutely go hell for leather. Neither of them have been in the boxing ring before, and the great thing about that is when you haven't been in the boxing ring, it's a place you're a combination of you're really fired up and you're just a little bit scared, and when that happens and you get punched in the face for the first time, it means that you throw a lot of punches. Now, a good friend of mine in, uh, in one of the first fight for, or second or third fight for life, Mark Bourneville, who you saw in the, uh, in the video there, I've told everybody that's exactly what we expect from all ears. So uh, take no backward steps and just keep throwing. Um, so, yeah, I'm excited about it. Of course, Sione Falmawina, another great rugby league player, um, is in currently in match fit on TV3. So Sione's getting famous all over again for the second time around which is a very wonderful thing, up against DJ Forbes. Now, two people you couldn't get who are more opposite. Sione, everyone I've spoken to in rugby league, because he, he came a long time after me, everyone I've spoken to in rugby league, whether it be a good friend of mine who's co-coached in the Warriors, a guy called Richard Agar from England, through to the people who played in North Queensland with him, through to people at the Warriors, they all said the same thing. He's absolutely mad. So I don't quite know what that means, but uh, I do know that when you put madness and rugby league together, you get outcomes like Mark Bourneville. Over here, we've got DJ Forbes, who is an absolute legend of the sevens game. He comes to the table incredibly fit, and if you're going to be in boxing, the, bit, the first thing you want to do is be fitter than the opposition. DJ's incredibly fit, and uh, I don't know that he likes the aggressive nature of the sport so much, but he took a lot to get over the line, so I'm very, very... Very, very appreciative, and he's uh, been coached by Isaac Peach. Uh, DJ's a good Westie, and once upon a time played for a West Auckland Rugby League club called the Glenora Bears, which was one of my clubs. And uh, he's, coach he's been coached by Isaac out west, so it's been, I think, a hell of an introduction for DJ, as for all of these guys here who are doing it for the first time, so we're very, very appreciative that we're on board. I know for a fact that Mossy Awatunga over here taking on Jerome Pampalone. It's a fight that I'm really concerned about. Obviously, Jerome's in my um, stable, and I expect him to go to the world title, but Mossy, probably for the first time in his life, has had a good three, four-month camp to get fit, strong, and healthy. He comes from New Zealand now, living in Australia. He's been trained by one of the all-time great Australian trainers, and I can promise you that fight is going to be an absolute cracker, and uh, they'll be going hell for leather, and they'll be very, very explosive. So I appreciate my five minutes here. Thank you so much for the New Zealand media who started to really re-engage with boxing again. I know... We've been away for a little while and Joe Park has been overseas, so we haven't quite had the boxing exposure we've had for quite some time. So I very much appreciate you coming in. Steve Dean's done a great job making sure, cajoling you, because I do push him like you wouldn't believe. Uh, very, very pleased that um, you know, you've all turned out. So thank you very much. And Dale, make it fast. Fight one sees Rugby Union taking on league in a classic cross-code clash. 
Obviously, it's the Blues and All Blacks star, Sam Tuitupo, taking on Roy Asutasi. I had probably four or five weeks of actually just starting to get into the groove of things and trying to understand the game of boxing. Uh, you know, it's a little bit harder than I thought. So um, I put things together um, over that um, time, but so it's just a matter of now just trying to make sure it all comes together on um, Thursday night. Sam, and uh, what's your plan to tackle Roy come Thursday night? I'm just, literally, I'm just waiting for my Burger King vouchers, to be honest. So, uh, <laughs> so once they come through, I think I'll be ready. But uh, no, nah, yeah, you know, I'm looking forward to uh, Thursday night. You know, obviously been out of the game for a few years now and obviously just looking to sort of put all my training and frustration out on something. And, you know, hopefully when it comes Thursday that, um, you know, I get the result. All right, let's go into our second fight of the night. It's an international contest and it's for the IBF middleweight Pan Pacific and WBO middleweight global titles over 10 three-minute rounds. It features the champion, the Russian, uh, the renegade, Andrei Mikhailovich, who's 19-0, up against the challenge from Edison Soltarin for Venezuela, who is 16-0. Edison is at the far end of the table. There's a translator with him. Uh, what's going on to take uh, for Edison to defeat Andrei and, uh, and win these titles? You're thinking, please, Edison. Bueno, primero que nada, este, a River Ring no hay nada escrito. Este, primero que todo, le tengo, vengo bien preparado, vengo bien preparado mentalmente, físicamente, y a River Ring no hay nada escrito. Este, puede salir muchas cosas. Este, el boxeo es traicionero, pues. Mira lo que puede, pudo pasar, lo que pudo pasar ayer con Real García y mira lo como lo, lo derrotó. Este, el well, he's saying that uh, anything can happen in boxing. He's uh, mentally prepared. He's ready to fight. And uh, there's nothing secured in boxing. He even mentioned the fight from last night. So uh, he's ready for it. Jonah, thanks very much. You said, Andre, at the open workout on Friday, you're going to knock out Edison. Do you still stand by that prediction? Uh, yeah, 100%. I stand by what I said. I'm going to knock him the fuck out. You forgot the fuck in there. So, that I de yeah, 100%. I'm number five in the world with the IBF. I'm an inch away from a world title. And this is another man. It's another pawn on my chessboard, and I'm the chess master. And uh, unfortunately, you know, for old Eddie, this is not going to be his night. You know, I own this. This is my moment, and I'm excited to be here. Oh, look, Andre hasn't fought for ages, man. He's been ready for the last nine months. And it um, doesn't matter who you put in front of Andre. Um, on Thursday, they're going to sleep. I have full confidence in that, yeah. Let's move on to fight number three, another classic league versus Union Scrap. It's our Auckland, uh, New Zealand seven star, DJ Forbes, and taking on our Warriors legend, Sione Famuina. Tolofa Sione, obviously, um, are you feeling match fit for Thursday night's fight, Sione? Yeah, Tarofa, uh, Ray. Um, yeah, oh, you know, I'm feeling, yeah, match fit. Uh, box fit, whatever you want to call it. Uh, it's been a hard uh, eight weeks of training, and um, yeah, I'm just looking forward to you know um, implementing what I've learned over these these last eight weeks. Yeah, it's a great opportunity. Obviously, being tucked in the lion's den with uh, peach boxing, so it'd be good to have uh, someone outside of the camp that I can hopefully uh, do some work on as well. So yeah, it's going to be a, a good night. To fight for our next pro bout is for the IBF. Australasian light heavyweight title over 12 three-minute rounds. The champion, Jerome the Panther Pabellon, will be up against uh, Iron Moseo Matangi. Uh, and uh, the Panther is 15-0. The challenger, 15-2-2. and two. Mose, uh first to you, uh, Welcome home, first. You've had some big fights already in your career, but is this uh, a massive opportunity for you? How do you read Thursday night's uh, clash against Jerome? Yeah, um, it's a really uh, big occasion for us, and it's um, a big fight. I, I understand that, and um, um, I, we came over ready, and uh, yeah, we'll be um, prepared on um, Thursday night. Come Thursday night. Yeah, I'm feeling good, man. I can't wait. You know, put in a lot of hard work to get here. I'm number eight in the IBF, and I'm looking to put on a great performance. I know Mosse, it's going to be a hard, hard challenge for me, but um, I'm going in there to put on a, a great boxing performance. Yeah. 
Queensland in Kangaroos legend Justin Hodges taking on the Iron Man of New Zealand rugby, Liam Messam. Liam, to you, we know that you love the art of boxing. How pumped are you to be getting back into the ring against a sporting legend like Justin Hodges? Yeah, no, I'm pretty excited. It's been a long uh, seven weeks of, of training, so I just can't wait to, to get in there on, on Thursday and, uh, yeah, go at it. Yeah, look, thanks for having us here. Oh, look, I'm, you know, same as Liam. I've, I've trained really hard. Uh, I've always trained hard. And, you know, I've, I've inspired some good quality guys like Django. Uh, gives you the confidence to go there and put a good show on. So, look, Liam's a big boy. I really admire him as a rugby union player, but come Thursday night, we're going to punch the shit out of each other. And someone's going to win, someone's going to lose, and whoever loses, um, so be it. I'm going to come there and, like I said, I'm going to try and punch the crap out of him. Well, I see these two down here being probably one of the most aggressive people. They've both fought uh, Paul Gallon. And for those of you who don't know, Paul Gallon was an all-time great rugby league player. He turned his hand to boxing. And he made more money out of boxing in, in one or two fights than what he did in rugby league. I had the privilege of putting him in the ring with a guy called Justice Hooney. And uh, Hooney beat the flying shit out of him. We paid Paul Gallon $1.5 million for the privilege of doing it. So it was well worth his while. But Paul Gallon started his career down here with, uh, with Liam Messam many, many years ago on A Fight for Life, and Paul Gallon fought Justin Hodges twice. So it's fair to say that I know both these good guys well, and they're going to be very, very aggressive in the ring. And I think from what you see from all of the guys that we've got here, they'll all be very aggressive, and it's going to be a really... This will be, the, by far and away, in my opinion, probably the best fight for life we've ever had. You know, we've got five great fights in the lead-up to the, to the main fight, and I know for a fact that... Me and Motto and Tanya Walters, which we get into now, are going to put on an amazing fight night. So uh, I encourage anyone uh, who is in the sport of boxing to have a look, because this is going to be something interesting and different, and it's going to be really, really good. And now it's time to introduce our main event. Fight six on the night is for the IBO Super Bantamweight World title fight. will be fought over 10 two-minute rounds. Our challenges for the vacant title from Canada, Tanya the Tank Walters, and from New Zealand, Mayor Nightmare Mutu. Thanks for joining us. Tania, just three more sleeps to go. How are you feeling? Um, I'm feeling good, ready to go, very anxious. It's been a long two weeks since I've been here. Um, a long wait since January, so yeah, I'm ready to go. And to you, Mayor, uh, a lot of people in your corner, up and down the country, Mayor, how are the excitement levels from your end? Uh, I'm ready, I'm excited, can't wait. Just can't wait to get in the ring. It's ready to fight. And we'll get some thoughts from you, please, Isaac. Coach, it's been uh, quite a, a build-up to this contest. What are we going to see from Mayor on the night, Isaac Peach? Um, yeah, you're going to see destruction. Mia's going to come out of the gate and knock Tanya out. I have no doubt. That's our game plan. That's what we're doing. There's no, we're not here to box. Um, boxing's about entertainment. Um, the fact I didn't like women's boxing at some stage was because no one knocks anybody out. Everyone taps and it's boring. Um, Mia's going to change that. Mia's going to change the sport and she's going to knock people out. So, yeah. 